Hey everyone, it's Drew. First of all, I'm wishing you a happy holidays. Nothing but love, peace, prosperity, and most importantly, wellness. Secondly, today's big idea of the week episode is a rerun from earlier in the year. If you aren't familiar with these episodes, you probably haven't heard this one, so stick around for the episode. Let's jump right into it. Hi, everyone. Drew Pro here, host of the Broken Brain Podcast. I'm excited to be here with you on a Tuesday, which means we have a bonus episode. I'm just calling these bonus episodes Big Idea. Big Idea Tuesday. It's where I come straight to you on audio and now soon to be social media because I'm going to be posting the clips on Instagram TV. So hi, everybody on Instagram. If you're not following me, D-H-R-U-P-U-R-O-H-I-T, hit me up. I'd love to say hi. Big Idea Tuesday is where I come straight to the microphone, straight to the video, and I, instead of doing an interview, share a topic or idea, a big idea that's radically transformed my life. Today's topic is how to catch and stop self-sabotage early. Two big ideas that will help you in the process. I'm going to kick us off with a quote. This is one of the best quotes that I, come ac- that I came across in 2019, and I want to share it here with you, and we're going to set up today's podcast. This is a quote by Jerry Colonna, who is a coach, who is a coach to CEOs in Silicon Valley. And he wrote a book last year. I'm blanking the title, but we'll include it in the show notes. And here's the quote. How have I been complicit in creating the conditions I say I don't want in my life? How have I been complicit in creating the conditions I say I don't want in my life. We've all experienced self-sabotage. If you've set a goal for yourself, if you wanted to make progress on a goal and dream in life, you know that the first person to get in your way is often you. If we're not making progress on the things that we want to say pro- make progress on in our lives, outside extreme acts of violence or war or other, you know, really terrible acts, which happen in the world, if we're not making progress on something, it's often our own doing. But if we were the problem, if we were the reason that we weren't making progress, if we were the problem, we're also the solution. If everybody else in your life your boss, your family, your husband, your wife, your partners, your this, your kids, your that, if they're the reason that you're not making progress in your goals and dreams, you're in trouble. You're in trouble because they have all the control. And we can't control other people. So I get excited when I find out that I am at fault, that I'm the problem. Not in a way where I have to be self Uh, be abusive towards myself or feel shameful or feel guilty, it it actually makes me excited. It makes me excited when I catch my patterns early and say, man, why is this thing happening in my life that I don't want? Why haven't I made more progress in my business? Why haven't I saved more money that I wanted to this year? Why haven't I gotten these few things done that I wanted to? When I find out that I was complicit in creating the conditions I say that I didn't want, I reclaim my power and that's what catching self-sabotage is all about is first understanding something that I coined the pendulum that if we were the cause, we are also the solution. If something in our life is not working out the way that we want it to, where did we contribute to those factors? Not saying it's a direct cause that it's our exact fault in a, ba- in a way that we're wrong, but we contributed to it. Where did I contribute to the factors that led to the conditions that I say that I don't want? That's what Jerry is asking in his quote. So think about your life. Think about something or some factors that aren't what you want right now. It's 2020. It's the later part of January. A lot of people set goals and intentions or at least reflected on the ones they set from the last year. In the early portion of January, it's not uncommon. And maybe there's something that you wanted to make progress on. Now, we're in the later part of January. A lot of those intentions sometimes slow down. So if they're slowing down, 
Where were you complicit? So I have two big ideas that I want to share with you that play into this idea that we've been complicit in creating the conditions we say we don't want. How do we fall into that trap? The first one is this. We don't speak up. I'm going to read that quote one more time by Jerry because it's going to set up the next thought when it comes to speaking up. How have I been complicit in creating the conditions I say I don't want in my life, in my health, in my family, in my business, in my friendships, in my faith, in my spiritual life? How have I been complicit? One of the ways that we become complicit is when we don't speak up. Here's a simple, big idea for you. The first big idea. When did I say yes when I meant no? When did I say yes to something? When did I agree to something? When I really didn't want to do it. When did I say yes to somebody about going on a trip that I didn't want to go on, but I felt bad? And then I fell further behind on my book deadline that I wanted to write, for example. When did I say yes to spend more, spending more money than I wanted to on something that is nice, but maybe I don't have the money for it right now. And it's going to derail me from other goals that I have. When did I say yes when I really meant no? When we can catch ourselves saying yes when we meant no, we start to understand that we were the problem, so we're the solution. This is really an empowering concept. When we're the problem, we're the solution. It's not a bad thing. It's an empowering thing. In fact, if you're somebody who's a people pleaser, we did a great podcast with my business partner's wife, Mia Lux, a few uh, weeks ago. It was all about breaking the pattern of people pleasing and how severe people pleasing as one of the factors in her life and Mia's life led to some of the conditions that eventually put her in clinical depression. That's an extreme version, but even if you're not depressed, quote unquote, and I know depression is a spectrum, even if you're not depressed, you can still be a chronic people pleaser. How do we stop people pleasing? We take a pause. Here's one tip. Here's really the only tip that I can give you when it comes to speaking up and catching yourself. When did I say yes when I meant no? Take a pause. When somebody asks you to do something on the phone, hey, can you volunteer for my daughter's fundraising program, whatever it might be? (laughs) Can you help my daughter raise money at school? Can you help with this thing? Can you help with that thing? Now, maybe... You are at your brim. You're at the level of commitments that you can possibly take on. You can't take on any more commitments. Others are just asking. It's not their fault they're asking. How amazing that they trust you enough to want to ask you in the first place, to want to rely on you. The question becomes, is it right for you and is it right for you right now? So one of the number one tips to stop that and allow ourselves to say no instead of just automatically saying yes is to take a pause, take a beat. I'll often be on the phone. Somebody will ask me as this podcast has grown. This podcast just started off as a little passion project, something that I did as an excuse to interview my friends and the people that I cared about on different topics. And people will ask me, can I come on the podcast? Sometimes these are people who are friends that I've known for a while. And instead of feeling forced to give a response on the phone because I feel bad because I know them and what would it mean? And I'm going to see them again at events, but I just don't, feel excited about doing the interview, or I genuinely feel like it might not be a right fit for the topic right now, or we've done too many episodes like that before, I take a pause and I say, you know what? Is it okay if I get back to you? I want to think about it. That right there takes you out of the cycle of whether you feel peer pressure, (laughs) whether it's your own insecurities, whether it's a combination of both. When you say, I want to think about that and get back to you. That's a powerful tool even in business when it comes to negotiations. Okay, I got that. Let me think about that and I want to get to you. And I want to get back to you. Taking a pause allows you to take back control and reflect. Is this right for me? Do I really want to do this? Do I have the time to do this right now? Even though this is a great opportunity, is it right for me right now? Can I actually show up and deliver the way that I want to? Or does it mean 
that I'm not going to be able to give as much love and attention to what I already committed to. Steve Jobs has a great quote that Apple has used many, many times in its marketing. They said, getting to a yes when it comes to our different products, I'll paraphrase here, you can look it up. One yes means a thousand no's. We had to say no to so many different things to create this beautiful phone, the iPhone, to create it the way that we wanted to, to have it work succinctly, for it to be a game-changing, revolutionizing product, it was a thousand no's. The same thing goes for your life. If you're trying to design your life, if you're kind of trying to create your life as a product, as something that can radically impact the world and shift other people towards the better, including yourself, your friends, your family, your loved ones, you have to design your life. How do you design your life? You first think about what's important to you. You make the commitment to want to give love and attention to that. And then you protect it. You vehemently protect it like it was your life that you were fighting for because it is, it is your life you're fighting for. You're designing this life. You got to fight to protect it. How do you fight to protect it? You evaluate everything new, every new demand that's coming in and you see if you can actually take it on. Now, sometimes we come through places and times in our life where we just have to take on another demand. A family member's sick. We have to show up for them. We have to be there for them. Okay, great. We do the best that we can and we show up for them. That's not what this episode is about. This episode is about the other things that are not life-threatening, that constantly derail us in our life and lead to self-sabotage. It's when we've been complicit in creating the conditions we say we don't want that we self-sabotage because we said we wanted this, but now we're doing that. That's self-sabotage. We're saying that we want to make progress on our health, but we're actually doing this other thing that's not allowing us to make progress on our health. That's self-sabotage. So first is understanding that we are complicit. Second is understanding how we're complicit. And that first big idea is we don't speak up. How do we speak up? We say no when we mean no. And we can say no kindly and compassionately and explain it without feeling bad. Let the other person decide how they want to feel about it. Last thing you want to do is say yes to somebody when you meant no and then end up resenting them. That is super selfish. Let's move on to big idea number two, being honest with yourself. If you really want to challenge yourself with this next big idea, I'm going to put out a test that you can do. I'm going to put out a little mini challenge. Keep a small notepad with you or even a little piece of paper and make a list even over the course of the week of how many times you lie to yourself or other people, whether it's through a thought or spoken verbally outwardly to them. Catch yourself. How many times do you lie? How many times do you say that something didn't matter to you? How many times do you say that you're not upset about something? How many times do you say that something isn't on your mind? How many times do you say that you don't feel like doing this or this doesn't bother you? All the different ways that we lie to ourselves. When we catch ourselves early lying to ourselves, we find the bricks. A house of sabotage is built one brick at a time. And sometimes those bricks are lies, lies that we tell to ourselves. What's a good example of a lie? A good example of a lie is telling ourselves that we want to make progress on something and that we did our best. Oh, today was just so crazy. I just couldn't go to the gym. Okay, pause. Let's look at that statement. Are we lying to ourselves? What really happened? Maybe we woke up and we just didn't feel like it. Maybe we woke up and we saw an email from our boss that upset us a little bit. And so we were so obsessed over that, that we were worried about getting everything prepared to, for today's meeting. That's real. That happens. But the power comes in understanding that we don't need to lie to ourselves, and we don't need to lie to other people about the things that matter to us. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, it was so crazy today. I just can't believe it. Like I just couldn't go to the gym, like one thing after another. It's like, you know what? I saw an email that was upsetting in the morning. It kind of threw me off a little bit and I just couldn't get in the right headspace to go to the gym. And I went last week, so I feel proud about that. And I'm just admitting to myself that this week, this got in the way. Okay, great. What can you do next time? How can you support yourself? 
you know your circumstances and situation the best, but do you see the power in the truth? Do you see the power in being real to yourself and not making it about the day being so crazy or that this happening or that happening or this other thing and actually owning what it was? When you own something that affected you, that derailed you from your goals and dreams, and you own your role in it, in how you were complicit in creating the conditions. You want to go to the gym, but you didn't go to the gym. Why? Something real happened. Being honest about that thing is powerful because now you can deal with reality. If being busy is the thing that derails you, you have no control about busy. You have no control when things get busy. You can't do anything about it at all. So what's going to happen? Things are just going to get busy next time. If you lie to yourself long enough, you start believing your lie. We know that. We know that from reading books, from literature, 1984. Tell a lie long enough, you start to believe it. Where did I lie to myself? It's only when you start tracking it that you can see how deep those lies go. So take out a piece of paper. Start making a little check, check mark, tick mark, like, you know, the ones they do in jail. One, two, three, four, cross it out five. <laughs> Catch yourself every time you tell yourself a lie in a week. And you might find that if self-sabotage is a challenge for you in your life, it could be that you lie to yourself more often than you think. Those are two big ideas that I'm bringing to you today in Big Idea Tuesday that I think that will radically help you when it comes to catching and stopping self-sabotage early. Big idea number one, speak up. Say no when you can't do the thing that others want you to do or that society wants you to do. Don't say yes when you mean no. Number two, be honest with yourself. Catch yourself lying. Why? Because when we understand to quote Jerry again, one last time, when we understand that we've been complicit in creating conditions we say we don't want, we take back our power. And when we have power, we're unstoppable. Ladies and gentlemen, you are truly unstoppable. I'm wishing you an incredible rest of the week. Thursday, we'll be back with another episode for you. If you want to text me, and share your thoughts on this episode, 302-335-6565. We also have the video that we're going to be posting on Instagram. Hi to all my Instagram followers. You can follow me at D-H-R-U-P-U-R-O-H-I-T. Drew Perowit, D-H-R-U-P-U-R-O-H-I-T. You can find me on Instagram. And again, if you want to text me, 302-335-6565. Have a beautiful rest of the week. Take back your power.